Good morning. Is there an unexpected angle on God's wrath? There might be one here in Jeremiah 7, verses 16 to 20, our devotional reading for the day. Here's what it says. Therefore, do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry or prayer for them, nor make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. Do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead the dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven, and they pour out drink offerings to other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, says the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the shame of their own faces? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, my anger and my fury will be poured out on this place, on man and on beast, on the trees of the field and on the fruit of the ground, and it will burn and not be quenched. So God tells his prophet Jeremiah, do not pray for these wayward people. And that's pretty strong meat. But look, this, this whole nation is given over to idolatry. The whole family's involved. The kids are collecting wood for the fire. The, the dads are up there stoking the flames. And the mothers are over there cooking up cakes for the family. It's kind of like a picnic. And here's the deal. There's no repentance in sight. Not a hint. Not a hint of it. Interceding for those in, in, in total denial of God's truth, that would be fruitless. Openness to God's work in the heart, or what use would this be? He's looking for an entry point. Now then, when no good can come because there's no repentance, there's really no entry point, they look at God and they say, boy, you guys sure serve a, a vicious, a very angry sort of a God. But Jeremiah has an insight for us here. Do you see it at verse 19? Do they provoke me to anger, says the Lord? That's interesting that that question is asked right there. Is this really a matter of just me arbitrarily being angry, says God? Is it really that God is looking for excuses to smash people? Or is it that these people's behavior is actually very shameful, that that they're degrading themselves so much, you know, they're made in God's image, but they're degrading that image so much, they're putting themselves in such a, a dangerous place morally, conscientiously, is, is the situation that actually God needs to act to prevent them from basically totally self-destruction, totally uh, putting themselves in a place where they are unreachable and they're done. Is that what's going on, maybe? Is this God, God in compassion, taking some sometimes very strong measures so that there's still a chance to bring these people back, still an opportunity for them to return to him? Is that maybe what's going on here? Sometimes the only way to get people into a place where you can work with them is to let them go to the bottom. Yes, I know this is kind of one of those tough love sounding pieces, but if God lets them get to a very a low point where they can actually come to themselves, actually maybe begin to rewind and regroup and say, hey, wait a minute, what in the world are we doing? Maybe he could do something for them then. So he tells Jeremiah, don't pray for this people. Don't even try. They're not repentant. Let's, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, this is a very interesting case. Again, these people are out in the open. They're just totally in the open uh, doing idolatry. Uh, violating the Ten Commandments right in the middle of the people, just, just in, the, in the bright open day. Lord, we hear your re requirement to Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. It's, it's causing us to think carefully, Lord, please, because we want to intercede for others. We want others to intercede for us. So, Lord, what we want to do is we want to have discernment. We want to be able to tell what you'd have us to do. Normally, we want to pray for people. Uh, Lord, it does call us to think about our own situation. How is it possible that we could be in a, a, a place that's so far off the track that we need some kind of dramatic uh, head into the brick wall kind of wake up call? I, I don't know, but Lord, please help us so that you can use us so we can be your agents in a world that is desperate and spiraling to absolute destruction. Please, Lord, we pray you'll save as many as you can Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God wants these totally out-to-lunch, idol-worshipping families to turn, and any of our idol-worshipping families to turn. May he take whatever measures his divine wisdom shows or what's needed to win some. God be with you today in all that you do.